Today, I thought I would go over how to change a ribbon on a typewriter. Now, I know it seems like a simple thing, but some people get tripped up on it, so I thought I'd go over some of the do's and don'ts and explain a few things a little further. In front of me here, I have a 1927 Royal Model P. This is a very generic model, and it has exposed ribbon spools. A lot of the typewriters you may encounter, like this 1930 Royal Model P, will have some sort of ribbon cover over the top. Some typewriters will have one large ribbon cover, and this kind of opens up like an engine hood on a car. This is probably one of the most common ways you'll see ribbons covered up inside of a machine. And instead of a hinged cover, some machines will actually require you to take off the entire front faceplate of the machine. Now, changing a ribbon and these instructions that I'll give you will vary slightly from machine to machine, but for all intents and purposes, changing a ribbon on a typewriter is virtually the same process for any standard keyboard machine that you will come across. Now, on some rare and antique machines, like the Hammond, or in this case the Typo, the ribbon spool mechanism is a little bit difficult and a little tricky to replace. And sometimes it might be pretty straightforward and easy, but it will be vastly different from what I show you on most standard machines, though the same general principles will apply. But with these machines, you will need some specialty instruction, or just examine how the original ribbon was installed on the machine. So for today, I will demonstrate on this 1927 Royal, because it has very easily accessible spools. Now, one of the first things you want to do is identify the leader spool. One spool will be mechanically engaged and the other spool will be free. On some machines you'll have a lever on the front that does that, a lever under the hood, or in the case of the Model P, you'll have a small knob on the side. Now what you want to do is take the ribbon and spool it entirely onto one spool, and that may take a few moments. Once it is all the way in that spool, you'll either have a little rivet, a metal piece, or a knot in the ribbon. On this case, in this machine, I have knots on these ribbons. You will take the empty spool out of the machine and then the take-up spool out on the other roll. Now this is the one that you winded all the ribbon onto. Flipping the machine onto the red setting, sorry, the red setting with the color selector, you're going to want to jam two keys up to raise the ribbon vibrator. And then it's just a matter of untucking the ribbon from the tines and pulling it off the machine. Once you've done that, you'll just want to wind up the one side that has the ribbon on it, and then remove the ribbon from the other spool. It should just come off, it's only speared on there with a tiny little hook on the inside of the spool post. After that is done, you will need to get yourself a brand new inked ribbon. Now, I sell these inked ribbons on my website, and you can find the link to that in the description. In the old days, typewriter ribbons came in these airtight metal ribbon tins that were designed to both protect the ribbon and to keep it fresh. In here you will find one singular metal spool, and that is why you remove the ribbon from the other spool. Once the new ribbon is removed from its packaging, you will have to stick it into the post of the other spool, the empty take-up, and spear it on one of those sharp little posts. It'll stick on itself, and at that point, you just wind it on like normal. And then you have a double spooled ribbon. Installing the ribbon on the machine is an easy process. If you look on the inside of one of these spool cups, you will notice that there's a directional arrow that shows you the direction that which the ribbon spins. Once you've figured that direction out, wind the ribbon and place each spool in the respective spool cups. And you may need to spin them around a little bit to get them to sit flush. Now, most typewriters have an automatic ribbon reverse, and you will just need to make sure that you thread the ribbon through that on both sides of the machine. So if you go over here, you'll find there's the same mechanism, and all you need to do is set the ribbon inside that. Now, this is the point that trips most people up, but there's one very simple thing that you need to know. You always want to get the ribbon as close to the page as possible. So on the red setting of the ribbon vibrator, you're going to jam two keys into place to lift that up and stick the ribbon behind the fork and then tuck it in. It may take a little bit of wrestling, but once you get it, wind the ribbon up a little bit and you're all good to go. At this point, all you have to do is roll in a piece of paper and 
begin type testing just to make sure that your ribbon is nice and fresh and printing evenly. 